and it's time for a sexploitation video again. These are some very early sexploitation films, fairly tame by the standards of porno today. We would probably laugh at these uh, and say these are not very sexy, but they were more provocative than anything. And the subject matter was definitely uh, having to do with drugs and sex and pornography and prostitution and bad girls and bad boys and all that stuff. But sex has been selling in movies ever since movies were first made back in the early part of the 1900s, late 1800s. As soon as somebody picked up a camera and knew how to use it, they were making sex movies. I promise you, they are some of the earliest ones. And they go on even today. We know the porn industry is just out of control today. It's an insane industry. You just turn on your phone and in a few seconds you can be looking at hardcore X-rated material. But way back in the olden days, in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, sex was still taboo. There were laws against it. You could not send materials similar to these pictures through the mail without being busted. I mean, my God, even the nude photo of Marilyn Monroe in Playboy was controversial when it came out. And the standards of society had to change in the 60s. With liberal Supreme Court decisions, they did. And they allowed Deep Throat to be shown in 73, along with I Am Curious Yellow, and Behind the Green Door with Marilyn Chambers, the Ivory Snow Girl, opening of Misty Beethoven. This ushered in a whole new era of porn movies where they had sort of had decent stories and somewhat decent acting and lots of explicit X-rated sex showing all the body parts, penetration, anal penetration, oral sex, you name it, interracial, threesomes, orgies. There seemed to be no limits to what they could show in movies, adult movies, about 1973 on. Bradley Mesker here, he was sort of tame. I mean, he has some sexy movies for sure, erotic. They weren't hardcore X-rated porn movies though. They were more sensual. The Emmanuel series was pretty well received. They milked that thing to death. A lot of different Emmanuels played the part. But she was European, exotic, and so that brought in a lot of customers that wanted to see that sort of thing. They wanted to feel justified in watching their porn, that there was some artistic pleasure. Of course, we mix nuns and women, lesbian nuns. I mean, come on. They've tried just about everything. John Waters has explored a lot of possibilities. Betty Page, she also starred with Blaze Star in a bunch of movies. And not most of these I've never heard of. These could have been movies that played at the drive-in theater. It's possible. Maybe some of these actually went directly to video. I have no idea. I believe most of them probably played on 42nd Street in New York City, where they showed around the clock almost 24-7 x-rated movies on that strip back in the late 60s and early 70s especially through the 70s after the laws became more liberal and that's Raquel Welch in uh, The Fantastic Voyage so that wasn't even really a porn movie there she is this Hanny Calder a little more racy but you got into women prison movies uh, you had women Nazis we always have women looking like they're the victims in these movies where the men have to come in the good good guy that is rescues them from the bad guys I suppose but they show the girls that uh, go off the, the charts here 3d I mean 3d was a thing for a while but honestly I still think 3d is terrible I've yet to see a 3d that looked like anything and never seen a porn 3d movie though I'd be curious what they would look like <laughs> you got to wonder right but that happens all around the world you can see in other languages here porn porn is universal it transcends any uh, demographics or any nationality every country there's porn around somewhere you don't have to look too hard to find it i suppose in some places it's more taboo than others but uh, some of these you could actually see on Amazon or HBO today, probably if you looked them up, even on Tubi maybe, some of these would be playing. I mean, honestly, you might have commercials. Dirty Mind of Young Sally on Tubi, I don't know. Look it up, maybe Georgina Spelvin. She's a, a good porn star. And these movies were meant to also, not to stimulate people to have more babies, but actually to be more careful about it and realizing that if you engage in sexual activity, 
there actually could be harmful diseases you could acquire or you could have a pregnancy. And so these uh, things are discussed very, very often in most of these movies. It's brought to the forefront, the risks involved in sex. I'm just kidding here. Uh, those are never mentioned, never mentioned in movies. All they do is just show that people are, women are nymphomaniacs and the men are sex maniacs and people live and die for nudity, sexuality. And so that's why they're called sexploitation movies. They exploit the fact that most people enjoy looking at porn or soft porn or a little bit of nudity or sexual material in their movies. And trust me, it will always be in cinema. It will always be in television advertising, commercial advertising on TV and the internet at large. You even see it in magazines. There are sexual images, uh, subliminal images in liquor ads and those kind of things. And that's been going on for years. Subliminal sexuality has been woven into Walt Disney movies. If you can believe that, you don't have to look too hard to find penises and Innu innuendos about sexuality and sex and, and women's bodies. That's all in Walt Disney movies today. But it started back in the wonderful sexploitation era of the 40s, 50s, and 60s when we had great films like these showing. And I love how the woman always is being rescued by there by either a guy or a monster. Somebody's holding up the woman. It just goes on and on. There's Bella Lugosi. He had quite a few uh, attempts at doing that, rescuing the woman and killing them too. He was good as Dracula. But uh, Zombies on Broadway, I'm sure that was a musical too that made big box office. And The Invisible Ghost, who can forget that one? Very tame. This is one of my favorites of all time, playing Night from Outer Space. Ed Wood, classic. Classic with Vampira and uh, all the other greats. So check it out. It's exploitation. It's hot.